Okay. Thank you for joining our 44 New Voices interview series. My name is Amira Ghulam Hussain, and today I am joined by Dr. Sarah L. Webb. Mm -hmm. Dr. Webb is an international speaker, consultant, and coach. She launched the global initiative Colors and Healing in 2013 to raise awareness and foster individual and collective healing through creative and critical work. Dr. Webb, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited for the conversation. Very very, very excited. So let's get right into it. So you have addressed colorism in a multitude of ways, including designing college courses, hosting international writing contests, publishing books, and teaching workshops and mentoring students from Sacramento, California, all the way to Sydney, Australia. What has been your favorite aspect of education and fostering healing through all of your efforts? Okay, so it's hard to pick just one. <laughs> I will say a lot of it has to do with the mentoring ship, mentoring aspects, because the, the, the genuineness, I think, and the sincerity of the young people, high school students, college students who reach out to me. I had um, the Sydney Australia one I mentioned because there was a young uh, 15 or 16 year old girl who was doing a project on colorism. And like many of the people who reached out to me, they are they're required to do an interview with someone. So they find me and they want to do an interview. And the time difference in Sydney, Australia is a pretty big time difference. And so we were kind of wondering if, it, if we can make it work. And so she made this video. She recorded a video asking me to, you know, do the interview. She's like, I know the time difference is really big, but it would just mean so much to me. And I've been bragging to my teacher that I've been able to contact you and you've been a role model for me. And I just like, I... I have to make it work. I have to find the time. Um, and so we made it work. I did it late on a Friday and early on a Saturday, her time. But those, wow, those are the moments that make all of the difficult stuff worthwhile. And so with that, what projects coming from Colorism Healing have stuck with you the most? Yeah, the writing contest, I call it my flagship project because it's the one that really made me see the, the potential reach for something like colorism. When I first started it, I thought it, it would just be like a North American thing, like a United States thing maybe. And then people were emailing me and say, hey, is, is this contest open to people in my country, in this country? And I was like, well, you know, next year I'll do that. And so I did it that the next year. And almost every year there have been like, international writers who not only participate, but actually win, like they're in the top three and things like that. And I, I remember hearing, again, another young Southeast Asian woman say, I thought it was just in my culture. Before this contest, I thought it was just me. I thought it was just in my country. And seeing so many diverse people all share similar experiences and having similar feelings and just being able to have that shared space where there's so much diversity, but among that diversity, there are, there's empathy and there's an ability to um, understand each other's relative pain as well as relative healing. So I think that is the, the project that will go down in history as like remaining to be the flagship project. So you, you launched Colorism Healing uh, the contest in 2014 to raise awareness about colorism among all the people provide, you know, again, a productive and creative outlet for self-expression and healing. Mm -hmm. Why is the colorism healing writing contest so important? And why is it your, you know, like the thing that you hold near and dear to your heart? Well, part of it has to do with my own inclinations as a writer. And I knew that when I wanted to address colorism, that I would have to do it in a way that aligned with who I am, right? It had to be authentic to me. And so writing, creative writing, academic writing, essay writing, all forms of writing and verbal expressions, also speaking and things like that. I knew that that would be a component of it. And so the writing contest is a way, I, I just believe in the power of writing, first of all, and in terms of the catharsis of it and being allowing people the ability to reflect on things that they might have just been kept, kept bottled up, right? And so I believe in the healing aspect of writing, the healing potential of it, and also the, the, what it, 
does to people. So every year I, almost every year, I publish an anthology that goes along with the contest. And with that, we have a live book launch. And so again, these people from across the world get to come together for a couple of hours and read some of their writing. And they get to just talk about their experiences with colorism and what it meant to be a part of this process. And just seeing what it does to them emotionally and how the participation in something where, you know, the, the largest prize is maybe a hundred dollars, maybe $75, right? So not life-changing money here, but yet the contest experience is life-changing for so many people and that they are like holding back tears during the live stream. And they're like in the virtual green room and saying, I have to have to wipe up my tears before it's my turn to start reading. And so that's why it's so special to me is the just the emotional impact that it has on people. And then in terms of the writing piece, there have been lots of folks who've participated who have gone on to publish their own books and to continue their writing career as well. So that's also really exciting. That is absolutely amazing. So while Colorism Healing focuses on healing from dark skin colorism, what are your thoughts on sentiments that light-skinned people are not Black enough? Mm. Well, I think there's a lot of confusion around race, and rightfully so, because race is absurd as a concept. (laughs) And I think there's, we have to have conversations collectively about the the purpose of race and the history of race and why it exists in the first place. And I think there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of imperfect use of language. And so I think there are a lot of people who see themselves as not being represented by light-skinned people, by lighter-skinned people. And so while acknowledging that they are Black, they don't necessarily represent my experience as a black person. And so I think the not black enough might translate in some people's minds as just not black in the same way that I am. And I also think that that's okay, right? I don't think it's helpful or necessary for us to say, well, if your black experience is not exactly like mine, then it's invalid. Or if, you know, we are diverse, even amongst ourselves as Black people, and especially if we're talking about the diaspora and the international aspect of that, but even within a particular ethnic group like African Americans, for example, or, you know, Jamaicans, there's so much diversity of experiences. And I think there's a way to celebrate that without necessarily demonizing people whose Black experience is different than our own. Wow. Thank you. That that's amazing, especially as it, you can't tell, but I'm half black, but my South Asian sides are definitely more prominent. So I know that I can mm-hmm. not on behalf of all of the South Asian community, but in the South Asian community, colorism is is very rampant. It is you know one of the driving forces, especially when it comes to marriage and what is defined as success, which is mm-hmm. lame in my opinion. <laughs> um, but with, you know, colorism healing, what, what is next? Like what is coming up next within colorism healing? I saw that the 2022 um, colorism healing contest is going to be opening up very soon, which is really yes. exciting. What else, what else is in store? <laughs> like what, what else can we anticipate? Because yeah. I, I just have to take a moment because though the work that you do and what you've created uh one has a special place in my heart with my own personal experiences and I can only imagine like the impact that you've had on so many other individuals so I'm just very excited Mm -hmm. well the continuance of things like the writing contest that you mentioned is coming back but a big part of where I am now is building teams and so that I can, so that I can expand what I'm doing, right? And so for the decade or so when colorism healing was just me, um, I did as much as I could. And I I do have visions and for the future, uh, visions of what else could be possible. And so right now I'm in a phase of creating a, a foundation so that 
I can continue to build on that vision. And so this year, for example, the writing contest, I have a chairperson who's taking over that, taking the lead of the writing contest. And my hope with that is one, she's a former participant. She's participated um, two years in a row. Um, she's published a home book. She's a very successful writer in her own right. And seeing how other people can add to the vision and help to grow the vision and really understanding that me as an individual, while I might be at the helm of what colorism healing is, if I only rely on my capabilities, my awareness, my perspective that I am artificial, artificially and unnecessarily limiting the potential of colorism healing. And so that's really a big part of where it is now. But what I'm doing in the space with the space and the energy that that frees up is starting to write more books. So again, going back to my first passion of writing and not just curating and facilitating spaces for other people to write, but getting back to doing that for myself, especially in the form of workbooks and journals. And I'm currently working on a self-affirmation workbook because I'm obsessed with affirmations and wanting to impart to people processes and strategies that I've used in my own healing, as well as with clients, as far as what I see is the power of affirmations, but also um, I don't want to say too much about some of the projects I'm working on, but they, looking at, you know, more multimedia kinds of things, um, possibly moving images could be on the table. <laughs> oh, this is very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and our final question, uh, on a less serious note, what has been bringing you joy recently? Hmm. So many things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I'm kind of in this digital nomad traveling the world thing, and I'm currently in New York. It's my first stop on this trek, on this journey. And so I'm staying in temporary housing, Airbnbs and that sort of thing. And the one I'm in now, what's been bringing me joy is the way the sun shines through the windows. And in New York City, for the folks who don't know, there are a lot of the windows have these gates on them. And so it uh, breaks apart the sunlight. And so you see these bright, you literally see the rays of sunshine coming in to the room in the morning. And then I usually like am burning incense. And so it gets this like smoky, like hazy morning, like sunny morning. And I, I'm a morning person as well. And so I am a person who finds joy in what I call mundane magic. And oh, just walking the streets of New York and looking at the texture of all the beautiful brick buildings and like all the great food places that I've never tried before. Um, so just life, <laughs> I guess, like the, the long and short of it. Uh, I am just really in love with how um, I've been able to create a particular lifestyle for myself. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you again for joining us and everyone make sure to tune next week for our next 44 New Voices interview. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>